Thank you so much for the introduction. And uh, let's, uh, because it's lightning talk, so just I want to hop on the topic directly. Uh, uh, let's begin with the agenda, what we will be looking in the whole presentation. Uh, basically, what we are trying to represent uh, in this session is uh, when uh, we have information, uh, sorry, when we have data and we lack information representation, why it matters and how it affects the represent representation for end users or for business uh, decision makers. So for this session, we will be taking on the use case of anti-money laundering and uh, why I we choose this topic and why uh, and how graphs are reasonable to solve this particular problem. And then we will hop on to the demo where Rimsha will be uh, going on with live queries and will be telling us how we solve this problem. And then finally, I will come back and tell you about what or where we should be going after this session. So money laundering uh, as a basic fundamental is uh, our rules or regulations that are basically standardized by organization or every uh, financial body is bounded to follow these rules. But uh, the problem is uh, due to the huge increase in transactional networks and we see multiple and uh, magnitude increase in transactions uh, in real time, there is a slight problem with uh, anti money uh, with the money laundering. What actually money laundering is uh, when the system or when someone tries to corrupt the system, it's known as money laundering. So what's the problem we are trying to solve here? The problem is as the data grows, as the infrastructure grows, we as a human being, uh, we are and after the growth of Gen AI, specifically uh, artificial intelligence and uh, LLMs and other uh, sophisticated techniques, people are also trying to use those techniques to fraudulate the system or tube this system in a way they want to do and making the chain of networks or making the rings and different patterns they use to make the system feels that it is legit, but in essence, it is not legit. So why uh, we, uh, you want to use graphs to solve this problem? And uh, before going to that, uh, I want to reintroduce myself uh, because uh, you would be thinking who I am and why I'm talking about this. So uh, I am doing a PhD currently and uh, specifically knowledge graphs and data modeling and information modeling. And I'm also working as an AI engineer. Uh, along my side is Rimsha. She is a software developer in banking sector and she has hands-on experience to this problem. And that's why uh, as a data scientist, we think uh, and as an AI researcher, as a Jane AI person, I think this is a huge problem and again uh, one of the thing uh, that news 4 j specifically solves uh, is uh, to help the uh, organizations to see what are the connected patterns uh, between the data they have so they can leverage that information or that data in a meaningful way so why graphs uh, first of the, first of all uh, i think every problem and every real world problem is sort of composed of a graph. For example, uh, our relationships, for example, our associations, for example, even from this very session, you can take the example of graph. Like for example, before this session, maybe few of you, you guys don't know me and I don't know you, but after this session, maybe we can have connection on LinkedIn, maybe we have connection on email, maybe we have some sort of connectivity and now we know each other and now we are, associated with each other. So to represent the real world associations or real world entities, they somehow are connected. And when things are connected, they are easily represented by graphs. Not necessarily everything is strongly connected. There are also some connections that are weakly connected. We won't be going into details of what is strongly connected and what is weakly connected, but uh, just for now, just think of this thing, this part as a person or entity having more relationships 
between each other are strongly connected and entities having less relationship or fewer relationships are weakly connected. That's all. Similarly, coming back to the our case that is finance, uh, financial uh, or anti-money laundering, financial bodies or uh, banking sectors can also be represented at graphs, as graphs because we have transactions, a huge network of transactions, and every transaction can be represented as a graph. For example, person A is sending money to person B. So there is a relationship between sends to, and this sends to basically represents the transaction or amount that we are sending. Also on the right hand side, the, the picture uh, depicts a simple graph or property graph relationship that we are well aware when we are using uh, property graphs like tools like Neo4j. Particularly in this case, I want to uh, use property graphs as a knowledge graph. Uh, and why I think about this part, particularly because uh, knowledge graphs are a more enriched form of information representation instead of data representation. So what I want to say is when we are representing railroad entities, uh, we can represent information in different patterns, like classically we used to do in tables and rows, like in SQL. But as the connections grows and we want to leverage those information or that information, that's where the graphs come, but that's where the property graphs come and that's where the knowledge graphs come. According to different definitions, I will sum up this thing, like uh, a knowledge graph is basically a data structure that helps you to represent real world entity in subject, predicate and object form, where subject is the entity that is connected to the another entity and the relationship is basically their or predicate is basically the, their relationship or semantic semantics that is underneath it. Let me give you an example. When you search on Google, for example, here I took the example of Leonardo DiCaprio, who is a famous actor. So for example, when you search on Google about any famous person or any famous organization, you see a panel and this panel in terms of Google uh, knowledge graph is termed as knowledge panel. And this knowledge panel basically is extracting information from the new Google's knowledge base where different websites and different information sources are connected. And then we are aggregating that information and representing to our user. So knowledge graphs, and property graphs helps us to do this part. Now, we want to replicate the same idea to our use case that is anti-money laundering. When we have transactions, when we have network, when we have uh, multiple accounts, and when we have different multiple uh, banks uh, operating at uh, different levels, maybe private, maybe government, maybe semi-government, they, they, they have different things. So let's connect them. and what we want to prove. The issue is if we have data and we lack semantic, then information uh, or the representation lacks uh, the essence of uh, what we want to do. For example, if you see this example, we have information about center, we have information about beneficiary, we have information about transaction. Since we have less semantic, or less relationships, we are we are not uh, fully utilizing the potential of the information we have, or uh, fully potentially utilizing the data we have. Instead, if we properly model this graph, that is what we want to do, and we want to show in this talk that when this information is properly mentioned and this pro information is properly connected via relationships, then we can see a better information representation, a better data model, a better decision making ability towards the data set. Now, uh, uh, I want to give this uh, session to Rimsha to give you hands on uh, towards this very use case and show you how we want we can leverage this thing. And let me hand over to Rimsha. Thank you, Siraj, for that insight, insightful overview. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Rimsha. Now, I will guide you through the practical demo that demonstrates how our data in both queries affect the graph structure in Neo4j. 
Uh, let me show my screen. Um, in this demo, we will be exploring graphs, data modeling. Often, when importing data into a system, we focus on individual data points. However, what's crucial for us to understand the connection between those data points, this is where graph data modeling comes in. We will be working with a synthetic data design for AML research in the world of anti mine laundry. It's not just about the transactions. It's about the connection, who is sending money, who is receiving it, uh, and how often this happens. These relationships are critical in identifying suspicious patterns, and that's exactly what we are going to showcase today. Uh, we will compare uh, two data, different data import queries. Uh, one creates a, a functional graph with, a, with semantics, while the other only sets properties on the nodes, missing key connections. I will show the result of both and explain why one approach is more effective than the other. Uh, uh, here is our first query. This, uh, this query is designed to load transaction data into new 4 j but only creates transaction nodes. Notice it doesn't create any uh, semantic between the sender and beneficiary. Uh, this is a common mistake when we uh, when importing data. It looks like uh, data is loaded correctly, but uh, without relationship. Uh, we can analyze the uh, data effectively. Uh, although uh, this creates nodes, but uh, we don't have a way to visualize or analyze connections between different senders and beneficiary. Let's uh, run the first query. Uh, as you can see, the query was executed successfully, nodes are created. But uh, but no relationships exist between them, uh, making the graph harder to interpret for our anal analysis. In the context of AML, the real power comes from the connections. Uh, imagine a scenario uh, where multiple transactions occurs between the same sender and different beneficiaries. Uh, this might indicate money laundering behavior, but uh, without any semantic, uh, we miss those connections. Uh, essentially, we lose the ability to uncover hidden patterns uh, of suspicious activities. Uh, Let's uh, uh, let's think uh, uh, of this way. If you just look at the transactions, uh, if you just look. Uh, uh, The transactions individually you might miss that a particular sender is frequently sending money to multiple beneficiaries, uh, which could be a sign of money laundering scheme. Uh, now, let me show you how we resolve this by modifying our query. Uh, here's the updated query, which creates sender and beneficiary nodes and add relationship between them using the send uh, money edge. This query provides a more meaningful representation of the data by connecting entities. In this query, we use merge. Uh, we use merge statement to ensure the sender and beneficiary are represented as a unique modes. Uh, we then create a relationship between them, which add uh, depth to our uh, graph model. Uh, I will run this query and let's see the results. Uh, now, as you can see, uh, the graph contains relationship between them. Send money. Between sender and beneficiaries, turning also isolated data points into connected entities. This is where the value of graph modeling comes in. By having these semantics, we can now query the graph to see uh, how transactions flow between senders and beneficiaries. For example, we could easily find out how many times a particular sender has sent money to a specific beneficiary. Uh, this connection-based uh, analysis can reveal patterns that would be 
impossible to identify using flat data structures. Uh, in this demo, uh, we saw the difference between a basic data import without semantics and a more structured import uh, that connects entities. Uh, by adding semantics, uh, semantics uh, we turn isolated data points into a meaningful graph uh, that can be used for further analysis. Uh, this is why uh, data modeling matters. Uh, it helps us, to, uh, us transform raw and unconnected data into actionable insights uh, by modeling relationships correctly. We can detect suspicious activities like uh, money laundering much more uh, efficiently. Uh, with that, I hope you can see the impact of pro proper data modeling on AML efforts. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I will hand it back to Siraj for the wrap up uh, or any question. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, as uh, we have taken already one more minute, so I just uh, finished this session. And if you have any question, feel free to reach us via LinkedIn or via uh, any other platform you choose. And that's all from our side. Thank you.